The Guru Narcissist Part 3. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to examine the concept of the Guru Narcissist. You may well ask why it's all so gendered. Do women really need more healing? Or is it that they're more open to showing their vulnerability? Both, says Bjorkston. There's a whole bunch to be healed from the effects of the patriarchy. And the patriarchy hasn't only affected women, she continues. If men were more held, i.e. supported in their emotions, they wouldn't be so repressed. Well, undoubtedly, some of the impact does come from normal male behaviour and the patriarchy. But a lot of it, and this doesn't recognise, that much of the abuse comes from narcissists. The fact that if you were to support narcissists and their emotions, it wouldn't result in the outcome that this individual thinks that it would. She adds, there are stories of predatory female gurus, but they're rare. Elsie says he has observed female healers who become seductive and prey on men's vulnerabilities and desires, i.e., of course, another form of narcissist. A key barrier to hashtag MeToo awareness for the chosen ones is the fashionable concept of the universe having your back. Essentially, the belief that some higher spirit is benevolently controlling your life and that you can call on the universe to deliver your desires through manifestation rituals. This kind of nonsensical belief is, again, another brilliant opportunity for my kind to abuse people. If you think that there is some higher spirit benevolently controlling your life, all I need do, if I were to portray that guru role, would be to feed into your belief and cause you to believe that certain things that have happened are indeed as a consequence of the universe delivering your desires when actually all I've done is plucked certain examples to reinforce your pre-existing belief. Rather than you actually examine the evidence in a critical and objective way, you want to see stuff that supports your belief, and it's easy enough to find it, and we use this to dupe you. Some people just live completely in the trance of magical thinking, says Elsie. That's why they get rid of their boundaries. Remember, magical thinking is something that occurs with narcissists, but it's something also that can occur with non-narcissists, but it actually falls under the auspices of their emotional thinking. Caroline, 37, who works in the healing arts, says that the night before she met her abusive guru boyfriend in Indonesia, she did a full moon meditation on the beach to call in a man saying, I'm ready to meet my partner, bring him to me. Then, boom, he was her very successful yoga teacher. When he immediately pursued her, she thought maybe that's who it was in the vision. Emotional thinking. They're connected. And despite his infidelity and controlling behaviour, key hallmarks of a narcissist, they were, she says, in a karmic weave. Bullshit. I attracted him into my life. Well, actually, you attracted him not for the reasons that you thought you did, and allowed him to stay longer than I should have. He was abusive, possessive, and aggressive, she says. But I felt so stuck under his power, it was hard for me to leave. After six turbulent months together, she left the country, finally splitting up with him a few weeks later. It was hard to process what had happened, until the distance between us gave some clarity, she explains. That distance between them would have meant that her emotional thinking would have dropped because she was staying out of one or more arenas of the five arenas of interaction. Thus, there was room for logic to get in. The experience broke her, she admits. It took a long time to rebuild myself. Placing too much faith in fate, i.e. emotional thinking, makes women ripe for exploitation, says Catherine Rees, who was a London-based lawyer has one foot in this world, and as a qualified yoga teacher, one in the other. Some men in the spiritual community hold the view that telling women about a divine plan to get them into bed faster than a few shots, she says. Often the woman will have manifested a man, Rees explains. Then one comes along and says all the right things, such as, universe spirit wants us to be together, and she'll be like, it was meant to be. Such magical thinking also means they're much more likely to see a relationship through to its bitter end, despite those red flags. In effect, the presence of emotional thinking again. In fact, red flags are often regarded as signposts to healing nirvana. How fucked up is that? That a red flag is not seen as a red flag, but is actually seen as a white flag. 
A lot of people who have experienced abuse don't see it as such, says Rees, but as a stepping stone on their spiritual journey. There's a pressure to go through the discomfort and come out to the other side in order to experience some kind of awakening. There's a constant quest to prove how spiritual you are by running the gauntlet. When Willis was dating the shaman, she'd justify it to herself and those around her by saying, I just have to be in my process. I have to be more spiritual by going through this pain. Emotional thinking. Some unscrupulous healers see this as an op opportunity for exploitation. Anna, a 32-year-old musician, signed up to a British shaman's Aoasha retreat in Somerset in an attempt to recover from chronic pain. She told him she'd been sexually assaulted in the past during a Reiki session, providing a vulnerability, thus giving the opportunity for the narcissist used against her, to which he apparently responded, no, no, you're safe with me. After the retreat, he sent her a voice note, Hoover, saying he tuned into his intuition and was getting the message that I was ready to work on my sexuality, that maybe that's where my problem was, and that he could do a sacred spot, i.e. vaginal massage. When she refused, he told her, it's your subconscious blocking you. Anna sent a group WhatsApp message to the rest of the retreat participants, warning anyone to stand up to any male shaman that tried to take a healing relationship into a sexual one. But she adds, this ostracized me from the rest of the group. It was very typical cult-like behavior. So in this instance, Anna applied logic and saw it for what it was, a huge red flag. But again, in standing up to this individual, despite her attempts to warn other people, she found that they weren't able to see it. This is why I repeatedly explain to you that you must look to your own defenses. It is not your job to protect other people. Now, in an even more delicate state, Anna says she suffered PTSD flashbacks to her original sexual assault and had to have counselling for the re-traumatisation. I've really had a tough six months since this happened. There's also the disturbing concept of a twin flame. See my video about that, which is a hugely important video. A notion much mentioned in these circles, where a person is brought into your life to cause conflict that will ultimately be healing, explains Elsie. In actual fact, this is the dynamic between narcissist and victim. They'll be like, that's why we're arguing so much. It's a nightmare situation where people stay with abusive partners, i.e. narcissists. It all conspires to trap women in a vicious cycle of victimhood. It's so easy to fall into being the victim and then stay in the vulnerable state, feeling like you have to work on yourself, says Willis. Because you're receiving abuse, your self-esteem plummets, so then you isolate yourself and become embarrassed, so you don't ask for help and you don't think you're worthy of help. A further vulnerability, and of course isolation, is invariably used by a narcissist to control people. The men, meanwhile, are caught in their own vicious cycle, but in exactly the opposite direction. While a woman loses her sense of self, the healers becomes massively inflated. It usually begins, explains Whelan, when they facilitate a powerful transformation. Then those vulnerable women start hanging on his every word. They'll say to their friends, you must go to this teacher, he changed my life. There's a tipping point, she adds, where a minority lose themselves in an ego soup, where they're doubling their prices, pushing the inner circle stuff, and are fully booked until November 2037. They forget that it's not actually them doing the work, but the divine. The spiritual ego, she says, is a far more scary than any rock star ego. A man's guru status often makes him all the more alluring to women. Whelan recalls witnessing frequent crushes to get into the front row, while Caroline saw beautiful women literally throwing themselves at her yoga master boyfriend. He didn't know what to do with himself. He was like a kid in a candy store. Needless to say, he was not faithful to her. Commission of Infidelity. People want a special one-on-one -on -one relationship with their healer, says Elsie. They don't want them to be boundaried. These men aren't inherently evil, though, the article tells us. I don't think that any of them, even Yogi Bhajan, start off with such crazy narcissistic tendencies, says Whelan. There are much easier ways of making money. This is a calling. You don't do this job without having gone through the mill yourself. And it's that type of thinking that just makes it so easy for our type to keep on doing this. That they think that somehow the activity of being this yogi makes them become an abuser. It's incorrect. They are narcissists that have always abused and utilised this as a means of a hunting ground. 
It continues by stating the men you see are also damaged. A lot of people get drawn to the spiritual path because they feel a lack of personal power, says Elsie. It's easy not to be greedy when you have no power, but once people start listening to you, it's difficult for that to not muddy the waters. Power is seductive, he adds. It's hard to resist unless a healer has a very firm set of morals and values. Can we ex uh, expect a lasting hashtag MeToo reckoning in spirituality? The Dalai Lama being added to the list of fallen gurus, Bjorkstein is optimistic. The cracks are starting to show. We're moving out of the age of the guru, she says. That does not remove the need for spiritual teachers, she adds, but instead the future will be founded on the feminine principles of care and integrity rather than what can I get out of this. Elsie is not convinced. We're never going to stop people abusing power. We just need people to be aware that it could happen. They shouldn't assume a healer has figured everything out. Thus, the article demonstrates the way that this is a hunting ground for narcissists without ever mentioning the word narcissist. These spiritual gurus are invariably narcissists utilising this concept of a divine power, the universe and spirituality as a means to control people, to draw fuel from them, to gain those residual benefits of sex, of money, of networking, of facade management, of acquiring character traits also. It is an excellent way of getting to the prime aims. Any subschool of narcissists could be a spiritual guru. But the ones that are most likely are upper lesser type A, upper mid-range and middle greater. Upper lesser type A, the affable arsehole, are often drawn into spiritual circles. They often find that they're drawn to contagion empaths who have that spiritual side to them. Upper lesser A are often charismatic. They're not necessarily wealthy but can do well and they often are very good at talking to people and would readily hijack such spirituality and guru status as a means for controlling people. Utterly superficial, but with the ability to appear deep, it appeals to the upper lesser type A. With upper mid-range, they similarly are charismatic, even better at a polished performance and more likely to have an extensive reach, turning it more into a business than a perhaps cottage industry. And with the middle greater, invariably with a powerful reach, knowing full well what they're doing and able through the use of lieutenants to silence other people, they are often incredible cult leaders that utilize this status as a guru for the means of getting to the prime aims. And they are even more successful when compared to the upper mid-range and upper lesser type A. I'm HG Tudor. Have you ever experienced a guru narcissist? Have you ever been in a spiritual situation and wondered whether you were involved with one? Or perhaps you have recognized now that you were involved with one. What happened? How was seduced? How did you deal with the situation? Share your experience in the comments section. I'm HG Tudor. Thank you for listening.